Hello and welcome back to another installment of my experiential meaning of the tarot. Today's card is the Empress and I have to tell you um, there are 78 cards in a deck of tarot, right? In the tarot there are 78 cards. There's 22 major arcana and then there's um, I can't do math. 56 minor arcana. And there are some cards that remain an enigma to me. And over the years, I've, I've wondered if they remain an enigma to me because I haven't seen them frequently in my own readings. Or is it because whenever I've read for other people, they've always been very literal and also for myself. But the Empress is one of those cards. So I brought a few examples with me of the Empress because, I don't know, I just thought I would. And I, over, you know, over the years in, on Tarot Tube, I've heard people discuss the difference between the pregnant depiction, like a, the depiction of a pregnant Empress versus a not pregnant Empress. And I have to tell you that if there's one that's really ambiguous to me, it's the one in Rider weight because I can't tell if she's pregnant or not. She does not have a pronounced baby bump, so to speak. And so I'm going to show you the Empress cards. And I also brought some books because maybe we could work this out together. And then after, you know, after we talk, like we talk about it, I know it's so weird. It's like one-sided. After I discuss a little bit the enigma it, that is the Empress card to me, I will tell you um, my experiential meaning of it. Like whenever I see it in a reading, what it has historically meant. So this is my Rider Waite. Uh, this is a Centennial. This is Hoi Polloi. So you see, it's pretty much a... A flat out um, copy of it or you know from memory as you could see like I love the Hoi Polloi. Anyway. Another one I brought with me is the uh, the Tarot Gaian, the Gaia Tarot. Gaian, Gaian Tarot. I have the French version. So I probably should do a video as to why I have some French decks but anyway. This is my guy in tarot, and in the uh, La Jardinière, it says, the uh, the gardener. I don't know if she's the gardener in the English edition, English language edition of this deck, but she's the gardener in the French one, and that's how I know her. Here she is pregnant, and she's lying in a field that looks to be in full bloom and full like if there's a full harvest so this is like very uh, blurry I was going to say this is very um, clear this could be read literally but these are modern times and not everyone is gardening what I'm trying to say. Then I brought this one from my new deck, from the Serpent and the Peacock. And this one has a very strong, very strong sovereignty vibe. This is a sovereign. This is the female counterpart to the emperor. This is what I see when I look at this card. A ruler. Same kind of vibe that I get from Toth. So this is the same kind of vibe I get from Toth in terms of, you know, it's the feminine receptive uh, equivalent of the emperor. So I brought a couple of books. I'm not gonna read from the books because that's boring. I'm just, I'm just going to, what I'll do is, um, I'll just show you the books that I reference. I, <laughs> I got rid of a lot of my tarot books, people, because they're boring. Uh, they're boring. But I like the ones that are like straight reference books, the ones that I could um, 
Okay, that's not true. I kept I kept a book on tarot that's I I kept some Toth books because they're they're different. There's there's one that's um very psychological and I love it. But that's different. That's reading. That's not ref, that's not a reference book for uh, reading the tarot. So what I have is I have this one, the Crowley Tarot, the Handbook to the Cards. Um, this is a U.S. Games Inc. Um, publication by Akron and uh, Hajo Banzaf or Banjaf. I'm sorry, I butchered that. I butchered those names badly, but it's this one. Um, this is currently in print. It's not a very, it's not a very expensive book. Uh, if you're watching me and you have a Toth deck, you probably already have this. This is perfectly fine. It's a really good. It's a good book. And it's got this whole page on the Empress here, and it has foundation analysis and description. It go, it goes it goes. It said there's several, like there's like at least three pages so far just on the Empress. Hang on, might be more. There's four. There's almost four pages on the Empress in this book. So there's a there there there's a lot to explore here for the Empress. I. have not read it. I, I've glanced at it, but it's not like I've, I haven't studied it is what I'm trying to say. Because me, if there's um, two words, the two most boring, the most boring phrase in the world for me when it comes to this subject matter is tarot study. It's not for me, people. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not throwing shade. If, you know, if, if tarot study is something that excites you, please keep doing it. Me, it doesn't. Me, it's it's work. It's it's not enjoyable at all. So we're here. So I have no shortage of information on the Empress in this book. Another book I brought brought along here, the one that I'm keeping is this one. And this is the Ultimate Guide to the Rider Waite Tarot by Johannes Fiebig and Evelyn Berger. And it's got a two-page spread on the Empress, or pretty much on all the cards, I think. Fabulous. I, in my lifetime, reading for myself, have only seen this card in my reading for ve during very specific events in my life. And so I'll, I'll talk to you first about when I read for other people and then I'll talk to you about my experience with this card. When I read for other people, so we're, we're, we're going away from me now, okay? We're talking about when I read for other people. This card is literal and has always been literal. It is pregnancy. You're expecting a baby. Someone close to you is expecting a baby. If you are not of childbearing age, um, let's say you're, you're you're you know you're older. You have uh, you have children or, or nieces and nephews that are childbearing age. Well, you're going to be a grandmother, an aunt, an uncle. Um, if you're a man, you're partner is pregnant. I've never, like I heard, because you know, I used to, I used to work alongside other readers, right? And I would hear people say uh, things like, oh, creativity, abundance. See, for me, abundance is like, well, what do you mean by abundance? So what am I going to do? I'm going to tell the person across from me. It's like, oh, you got the empress in your reading. That means like abundance. And the person is sitting across from me and they're unemployed and they're having, and they're coming to see their, they're coming to see a psychic because they're trying to figure out, well, I need a job. And you see what I'm saying about it, right? It's, it's, for me, this has always been very, um, what's the word? Contentious. This is a contentious card for me because when whenever it's come up in a reading, it's always been very literal. It's been um, pregnancy. It's been um, wealth, like just flat out wealth. You know, it's like I, I tell so this would come out in a reading for someone who has had a good year for and if, if they're um, a business person, right? 
if they run a business. Um, this is literal, literal people for, for anyone who works in agriculture. This card comes up, and, you know, um, as um, a harbinger of this, you're going to have a good crop this year, literally. Literal, 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 literal. Um, it often, because I do a zodiac spread, it often falls in cancer. And cancer is the, what is it, the fifth house? The fourth house, Leo is the fifth house. It, 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 you know, it typically falls in cancer and it's literally uh, you're pregnant or your daughter's pregnant or your daughter-in-law is pregnant or your niece is pregnant or your, or your granddaughter's pregnant. You know, it's pregnant, 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 right? However, I've also seen it have a secondary meaning experientially. So again, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to read from the book, but cause you all could read about, you know, so, so there's the, um, experiential reading of the cards is often, you know, when you go to see a psychic, when people go to see a psychic, it, they have, you know, it's, there's familial issues, there's relationship issues. And the Empress will come up to describe a solid, um, a solid woman, as, as they say in my culture. And bear in mind, I learned to read cards and primarily read cards within my own culture. So now we're going to explore that a little bit. My culture is very, um, puts a lot, it is, it's very interesting Italian culture, especially the, 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 the Italian culture of the immigrants, because on the externally, externally, it's very patriarchal. The, you know, man of the house kind of um, culture, very patriarchal, very rigid in that sense, very the emperor. But behind the scenes, within the home, or within the home and in the hearth of the home or at the hearth of the home is the Empress. And it is, uh, make no mistakes, my friend, it's a matriarchal culture. The strength comes from the matriarch. The matriarch rules quietly behind the scenes externally it's the patriarch the emperor but everyone knows um everyone in this culture knows that it is in fact the matriarch that rules the family period she's the final say in a, in all matters so this card would come up for someone who is well in their role. They're not of like, this is of like childbearing age is how like, you know, if you read the books and stuff like that, no, this is, this is the Empress. This is the matriarch of the family. And, um, and what's interesting is that when I'm reading, for someone who's the matriarch of their family, this is their significator and it lands in Capricorn, which is um, the father. So you see that it's it's really, really, this, this is a very contentious card for me for that reason because um, it either means a lot or it doesn't mean much at all. I don't even know how to, does that even make sense? It's, it's not abundance. It's not, it is, um, it's a heavy card. It, um, it precedes the emperor in the major arcana. And again, because of my worldview, um, it represents the matriarch of a family. When I read then there's another experiential meaning of this. And when I read for myself, um, I have gotten other meanings as well. 
because I work a lot with um, La Madonna. I am a devotee or not, is a devotee even a word like that's appropriate? I don't even know if it's appropriate. But I am, I am a daughter of La Madonna. She is my, she is my spiritual mother. And all these are aspects of La Madonna. This, the Empress and the Empress and Toth reminds me of Stella Maris. Of that aspect of the Madonna. This, Our Lady of Grace. Who I, and my family named me after Our Lady of Grace. So this. This card was always a contentious card for me because um, when I didn't see it in my reading, I'd feel a little, where's my card? Because if you're not in this, this card doesn't appear. If you're not in this energy, if you're not in this Empress energy and this Empress energy it doesn't matter this is like this has this has nothing to do with gender and it has all to do with that receptive yet grounded energy this is gaia energy which is why it surprised me that the empress is not that the world is gaia in the gaia tarot but never mind that's like that's a that's a deck review it doesn't have anything to do with here this to me also has a very Madonna energy. So the Empress, my experiential meaning of the Empress has been Madonna energy. When someone comes would come to me for a reading and they're experiencing rough times and the Empress shows up, the Empress is Our Lady of Grace. The Empress is um, that, you know, the miraculous. Uh, you know that that aspect of the Madonna um, whereas the high priestess which I forgot to mention um, in my video on the high priestess sometimes the high priestess if you know, could also mean the black Madonna or the dark aspects and when I mean by dark it's hidden not dark as in evil dark as in hidden Obscure, you know, you know, obscure, uh, occult, hidden. All right. So that's Madonna energy. Um, whenever this card has appeared in a reading, those have been my experiences. And in books, I've read where it's sovereignty, and I do see that, and and I do see clearly that the Empress is energetically the other side of the coin of the Emperor or the re feminine receptive energy of the Emperor but because she precedes the Emperor and she's number three and number three is power number three is perfection she is she rules she also rules the Emperor all right I was all over the place people but I hope I hope you got I hope there's a takeaway from all this <laughs> because like I said this is a contentious card for me it's a bit of an enigma because I, I I've seen it in these very specific uh, contexts and please in the comments down below share with me and I didn't mean to throw shade like if you see the Empress and you're happy because it's abundance and prosperity or it's a you know it's creativity and all that stuff that's fine but my series is about my experiential meaning of these cards and how um, I've you know all 78 cards I've seen them in very specific contexts and that's what I'm exploring in uh, this series Thank you so much for tuning in. Please, in the comments down below, share with me if um, if you've noticed similar trends with the Empress in readings. Have you have you um, experienced it being Madonna energy, um, matriarchal um, that that the Empress does in fact rule uh, a, you know rules over all 
including the emperor. Um, has it just, you know, has the empress only come out for you for, because in my own personal readings, I have to say that, you know, I was, you know, each time I was pregnant, I got this card in a reading. Um, so that's pretty literal right there in terms of meaning. So uh, again, I'm rambling in the comments down below, please share with me. I want to hear your experience with this card. Thanks for tuning in and I'm wishing you all a beautiful day.